Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the angle. And like I did say earlier before we took the break, that we are talking about the role of the youths in nation building, particularly the African continent. Now, I have very special people here with me from different parts of Africa to talk about the importance of young people, you know, lending a hand to build the African continent in commemoration of the African Day. Now, I have with me today Christian Kwesi Majid, who is the 2020 FALA winner from Ghana. And I also have with me Mary Mukeba, the 2020 FALA prize winner from South Sudan. And I also have Gray Michael Wawa, from the 2020 FALA star prize winner from Cameroon. Thank you so much. Vous avez parlé français? Bien sûr. Oh, je parle français, mais je ne parle pas autant que. Il n'y a pas de problème. <laughs> okay, good to be here, guys. Thank you so Now, much. we are talking about the role of the young people in African building. Now, this is all in the build up to the African Day. That is what we celebrate, that has been set aside to celebrate the African Day. Now, let's talk about it. Now, can you talk to us about Africa and the role of young people, Michael, in making Africa? and for Africa, Christian. Okay. Yes, Africa is the second largest continent in the world. And Africa, as we all know, is made up of Africans with 54 countries. Africa is a very special continent because of the resources we have here, away from the mineral resources, but we have the human capital, the human resources, the people. And this is what makes Africa a special place, aside the gold, the bauxite, the diamond, and all that can be found here. We also have the beautiful people of Africa. So, in, in a summary, this is what I can say about our beautiful continent. Amazing. Now, what is the role of the young people in Africa and for Africa? Yes, the role of the, role of the youth for Africa is, is very simple. You realize that um, the challenges here in Africa are very special because from the onset, once you are born into this continent, you, you are born a fighter. You are born to, 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 to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And you are not born to, to, let me say, have everything at your disposal. The reason I'm saying that is because in other parts of the world, you realize that most of the things they actually need are being provided for them. But over here, it's quite different. One has to really work hard and uh, put in efforts to make not only his or her life better, but the community at large. And so our role here has to do with we making a difference, we making a change, we making an impact in our respective societies in our respective communities and no matter how little that change is that change would definitely have a ripple effect and that change is going to affect not only us but our communities the nation and the continent at large so that means every young person has a responsibility to building africa Absolutely. and it has to start with your community it has to start with what you can do with where you are. Yes. I like the example that you gave that in several parts of the world, especially the European parts of the world, we see that some of those basic amenities, when it comes to social amenities, mm -hmm. are readily available. Yeah. These are things that nobody needs to necessarily work so hard to put in place. They are there. You know, you want to go to school, there's a paying system yeah, for yeah. those who don't even work. But the system in Africa does not enable such practices. So we as individuals got to do something, yeah. especially now young people. Now Mary, you are a FALF ambassador. Now you're going to share with us some of the exploits because he did say mm -hmm. we had to do something. Now you have taken it a step further as a young person to ensure that you're doing something in your place. Now what are some of the exploits and enormous contributions that you have done 
for Africa's development as a continent? Okay. Africa is a beautiful continent and full of beautiful opportunity. And we are the richest continent mm. in the world. But Africans didn't realize that we are the rich continent. I'd like you to say that again. We are the richest continent in the world, but Africans do not realize that yeah. they are the richest continent in the world. Yeah. And, it, and this happened because of ignorance. But it's a high time that we as young people take our responsibility in building Africa now. I wanted to talk about the contribution that I did in the development of my community or my country in Africa. So I joined this uh, Future Leaders African Foundation in uh, 2019, in 2019 August. I started working, I started looking at what I can do. I never had a vision. I was just like any other person that is just eating and sleeping. but. Uh, once I get exposed to Pastor Chris, and then I look at uh, that website, and then I see that people are doing more things, and I can contribute also to this development of Africa. So I started praying towards it. I started focusing. I came up with a different idea, like uh, making some leadership training. I started making leadership training in my country, South Sudan. I started going to schools. I started going to different communities, making those training. I started identifying lacks. So I did a lot of things like going to the orphanages, find out that they really need love and they really need help. I started working towards that. Now in 2020, my mind expanded. Mm. My mind expanded like I said, I'm not like looking at South Sudan or the city where I came from because I need to look at Africa. Mm. Yeah. I started moving out of my comfort zone. I went into Uganda. I started doing a project in the refugee camps. I started doing some small projects like um, um, cleaning and all those things. I realized that uh, there's a need. Then I started doing an agriculture project. Wait, we, we need to take it again because that's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. You started in your country in South Sudan. Yeah. You had to identify some of the orphanages and mm -hmm. you organized some stuff there. Mm -hmm. You took it up. You had leadership trainings mm -hmm. in some of the schools that you had to visit. And you thought to yourself, okay, I don't want to just read South Sudan. Mm -hmm. I need to take it to the other African countries. You went to Uganda mm -hmm. and you found a refugee camp mm -hmm. and you started reaching out to them yeah. in the refugee camp in 2020. Yeah. So in less than a year, your vision expanded mm -hmm. just by being a part of the Future African Leaders Foundation. Yeah. And you are a young person. Mm -hmm. You're not up to 40, are you? Yes, <laughs> no, okay, fine. I just wanted to highlight that. Go ahead. Yeah. So when I reached to the refugee camp, I found that they are really going through a lot. Like uh, they are casting all the blames to their leaders. Then I started rebuilding structures with the young people. I started telling them that it's not about your leaders. Yes, we are here. It has happened. Yeah. How can we come out of that? Now, I started making some trainings. Now, they started joining us. I raised like over 25 young leaders. And then we actually begin a very small project of agriculture where we plant trees, we plant uh, vegetables and fruits. And then after like a, a month, they started. And then we now distributed out. It began in a very small greenhouse. And then after six months, I distributed to over 14,850 household. You distributed food items? No. Fruits? The fruits, yeah. You, like you distributed seeds. your agricultural produce? Yeah. What started in a small farmhouse, mm -hmm. you distributed to 14,000. 850. 850 households. Yeah. So that means in 14,850 households, mm -hmm. there could be five persons in yeah. one household. Yeah. Yeah. There could be seven persons in another household. Put all of those numbers together. Now that is seven in mm -hmm. one household, and you distributed 14,850 yeah. wow. agricultural products. Yeah. Amazing. And we never end there. Wow. Like, uh, it went so amazing, and uh, Pastor Chris gave me the chance to come to Lagos and to greet him. That was enough for me to go with a lot of grace. So when I went there, I remained in the capital city of uh, Uganda, that is Kampala. Then I now make another strategy, like to communicate to them. I want you to do this. I want you to do this, looking for money and do this. So I went back to supervise the work. We set up seven more greenhouses. Wow. From two, we 
add some five more. So we are now in five different uh, refugee camps with the different greenhouses. So our distribution for the first and the second quarter, it's 9,000 household. And we are still going ahead because we need to make sure that because where those people are, their place is like a desert. Mm. It's just like uh, like isolated place. It's not like some kind of a good place. So we are looking at uh, changing that place to be like a greeny place. That is our main target. Now, we need to make sure that every household receive a fruit, receive a vegetable to plant, and receive um, some trees. This is our goal for this year. We, we must make sure that we hit that target. Amazing. This 9,000 household, you did hit in the first two quarters of 2021. In the first and this quarter that we are in. That's what I'm talking about, the yeah. first quarter 2021, yeah. the second quarter 2021. Yeah. Now, in the year where there was a pandemic, as a young person, you were able to bridge the gap of hunger in these refugee camps to 14,850 households. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about, building the, the country. Now, let, let's talk to Michael for a bit because I'm going to come by. Now, Michael, I understand that you're into technology and that was yeah. what got you to win the Star Prize Absolutely. for Fale in 2020. Now, tell us the future of technology in Africa because um, we've seen how technology can actually change the narrative. Absolutely. Now, what is the future of technology in Africa? Because most African countries have not fully embraced the, the, the potentials of technology. And that's the reason why we see a lot of um, um, setbacks in some certain things. When we, let's talk about agriculture, for, for example, there are some mechanizations that have been introduced, but because um, African leaders, African governments, African people have not been able to take advantage of technology rather than produce 5,000 fruits at once because you're using the, more, and the, you know, the old traditional system of farming, you're seeing yourself make a produce of 1,000 and it's limiting. What is the future of technology in Africa? Thank you so much for this opportunity to be on set with you. Uh, let me start by thanking our great man of God, uh, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome, who is the president and, of course, the grand patron of the Future Africa Leaders Foundation. Pastor has been so inspirational to young leaders all over Africa, myself in particular. In fact, he is the man of God of our times. And I also want to thank our director, the highly esteemed Pastor Diola Phillips, and, of course, the entire FAF team for the opportunity they are giving young people like myself to, ex to be exposed to such platforms. So I want to start by... In fact, Pastor has made us understand that technology is a weapon, and we are actually in an era where if you are ignorant of technology, it's actually going to harm you, right? So we all, as Africans, need to have a good understanding of what technology has, or what technology is around us, and how we can, of course, use it to our advantage. So technology in itself was made to make life easy, right? The initial concept behind technology was that if I'm doing something in one hour with a technological device or with a technological innovation, I should be able to do it in maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So technology has a whole lot of potential in bringing about more opportunities for the young people in Africa. So when we have most African leaders are talking of technology, we are looking at technology as the fourth industrial revolution because what colonization has done to the continent will be nothing compared to what a digital poverty would do, right? So it's a time when we have to engage more youths in acquisition of digital skills that are relevant because technology has the ability to penetrate all facets of human life from agriculture, from health, to finances, and whatever you think of, there's an ability for technology to make life easy. Of course, we are talking of technology which is not harmful because during this time of the we pandemic, how people yeah. people were able to perfect um, technology, but we are talking about safe, safe technology. technology. Yeah, so we're actually looking at how we can use the power which technology has to better the life of people. So through technology, we can actually revolutionize sectors like agriculture, like you said, there are technologies now that we can actually, instead of doing things in small scale, with the advent of such uh, technological solutions, we can move from maybe five to 10,000. Actually, I'm engaged in agriculture as, as, as Mary is. And I've realized that once you have a good knowledge of technology in whatever you're doing, your outcome will be far more productive than whoever is doing the same thing. So we have, we've devised several technologies whereby we can use a single stem 
and multiply to 10. That's technology in agriculture. Now, also in healthcare, there's a possibility where we can keep track of a whole lot of our health data that can help us to better our healthcare system because just the pandemic alone has been able to expose to us that our healthcare systems are failing.